Oh, we still want you to hear this. So we're going to start in a really clean, clear place. So you get the idea of this vortex, yes? And today you've accepted more than ever before that your inner being is standing right in this vortex as a vivid, real life, vibrating, emanating, broadcasting part of your vortex. And that law of attraction is responding to that vortex. You got all of that, didn't you? So here's this vortex and here you are standing somewhere in relationship with it. When you are standing in a place not up to speed with that, it feels off to you because that is on. That is who you really are. That is your new standard. And that, a very large part of you, is expecting with great fervor. And that, law of attraction, is working on. And all of those components are swirling together. It's real and it's big. It's like a world coming into being. It matters that much. And here you are standing emotionally somewhere in relationship to that. So here you stand. It's not that. Here you stand. And there's a part of you that wants to defend why you're here instead of over there. And that's the thing that we want you to get over because your inner being, not one time ever, is standing over there mad at you for being over there. And that is the greatest reason for your discord. Your inner being's not having those thoughts of your failure or those thoughts of your incompletion. Those are your thoughts. And those thoughts are so off from your inner being's thoughts because as far as your inner being is concerned, you've created all of this and your inner being stands there being it and never thinks a thought about your unworthiness or your incompletion or your lack of judgment or your, or your, or your, or your. That's why you feel like you need to justify. You're trying to explain to yourself why you're not there. And we just want to say if you'd stop trying to explain to yourself why you're not there, you'd be there. If you'd not feel a need to defend, if you could just say, oh, okay, here it is. Here's where I am, but this is what I really am. My work is not to explain why I'm over here or to, or to explain how I got here or to defend to anybody else how much I don't like being here. That's all just wasted time, wasted time, wasted time that keeps me from being over there. The realization that that exists now. So you're with us, aren't you? You realize that that exists and that that's a good thing. And you can right now, especially at a distance, feel that where you are isn't very important in relationship to that. So meditate. Ah, oh, feels so good to just clear my mind. Ah, oh, take a swim. Feels so good to clear my mind. Ah, oh, have a massage. Feels so good to clear my mind. Stand on a mountaintop and look at the vista. Feels so good. In other words, do those things. Do the getting into the receiving mode things. How do you get into the receiving mode? Doing things that make you happy. But what is a surefire way of getting into the receiving mode? Yeah. Breathing. So you know what to do. You do. You know what to do. And we're not going to ask the question, so why don't you do it? You know what to do. You know what to do. We've just spent a little bit of time helping you to realize how important it is to do that how important it is to do that and how nothing else is that important. So if we've convinced you that you've created a vortex and you have, and that it is broadcasting and that it's ripe and ready for you to receive and you can, then isn't it logical that you would do anything and everything that you could to be in the receptive mode more of the time? And that's why we say things to you like, don't take any action until you know you're in the receptive mode. When someone comes, a magnificent company that's got a really big brochure and a nice looking resume, and they present what they would like to do for you, your answer must be, I'm going to get into the receptive mode and find out how I feel about you. In other words, your brochure doesn't matter. Your vibration does. And I'm going to nail that down. Now, you're probably not going to say that out loud, but you want to say it to yourself. I'm going to get the vibe of you and I'm going to make sure that I'm in the receptive mode before I get the vibe of you. I'm not going to be standing in a room looking at the ugliest drapes I've ever seen in my life and make a decision about who's going to replace them because I'm going to get something worse than what I've got if that's the mode I'm in when I make that decision. 
I'm not going to sit on my sofa and look at a great big giant television screen with the sun shining in on it and make my decision about needing some window coverings. That's the wrong place to make that decision from. And these things seem so unimportant, but they are not unimportant because everything's the same way. Get into the receptive mode and then get the inspiration and then take the action in response to the inspiration that you then got because you were in the receptive mode. There's no other way of going about it. And don't tell us that you don't know when you're in the receptive mode. You do. You know when you're soaring and when you're mad. You know when you're confused and when you're clear. You know when it feels good and when it doesn't. You know. You do. You know. You do. You know. You do. You know you do. You know you do. You know you do, don't you know you do? So when, you I, do. So when I feel like I'm in the receptive mode to key their car. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not yeah. the right way. <laughs> but that's a good thing to talk about here. Because, because it is a receiving of something. You are always attracting. You're always broadcasting and you're always matching up with what you're broadcasting. So it's helpful to know that. It's like we said earlier, when that momentum's going, you can't stop it. Not immediately. You can't stop it. But you will sleep and you will wake up feeling better and then you'll sleep again and you'll wake up feeling better and you'll sleep again and you'll wake up feeling better. It is a process. And when you wake up and you tune in on purpose and then you have a better day and then you wake up and you tune in on purpose and you have a better day and you wake up and you tune in on purpose and you have a better day, in time you stop blaming those conditions that you were focusing on for the way you feel. And you do what you said. You take full responsibility for being in the receptive mode or not being in the receptive mode. The right answer for Esther to say to these really nice people who are not giving her what she really wants, the right answer would have been, well, listen, you really didn't have a fair chance because I chose you when I was not in the receptive mode. <laughs> and watching your behavior made it virtually impossible for me to get into the receptive mode. So there's no likely way that this could turn out any other way than it did because you and I met on a whole different vibrational frequency than the expectation that I had in my vortex. And they would have said to each other, that is the craziest damn woman that we have ever worked for. They would not understand it at all, but Esther would understand it. You didn't have a chance. I wasn't in the receptive mode when this all got started. And once it got started, I wasn't able to get into the receptive mode. And so this just had its natural consequence. And so now, please take those draperies and dig the biggest hole that you can dig and put them in it and cover them up and I will get into the receptive mode eventually. And meanwhile, all is well with me about this because everything turns out the way the vibration has dictated. I think I was even more angry. I'm just realizing now because I was angry at myself that I should have seen those. Well, so was Esther. That was the whole point. The draperies are really secondary. They don't matter at all. What matters is being a deliberate creator and what matters is being in the receptive one and what matters is being the uplifter. But you see, Esther was trying to use words to uplift. Words don't uplift. These people feel terrible about what happened. They feel terrible about what happened. This one-armed man. <laughs> Giving it everything he's got. Bless his heart. Truly, truly. He was in an impossible situation. Esther should say, you didn't stand a chance. My expectation of you was so strong that you would fail, that even though you did everything in your power not to fail, my thoughts are so powerful. He wasn't a one Makes you not want to play with Esther, really. All is well. All is well. They have benefited greatly from the interaction. But sometimes you've heard the saying in your physicality, don't throw good money after bad. Well, that was somebody figuring that out. In other words, once it starts to go that way, and that's why Esther is mad at herself, is because she thinks that she has the ability to do that and usually does.
And that's the thing that we would like to say to Esther and to you. Look at the things where you are doing that, where you are doing that, where you are doing that, not on the thing where you're not. Of course, you're going back to those vintage beliefs and those vintage thoughts. In other words, there are things that you've picked up along your physical trail and then other things touch you and you feel the reminiscence of that. In other words, there's something about this that reminds you of something else and it activates something within you. And of course, you want to catch it at the early subtle stages. That's what true mastery Mastery is, but on your way to mastery, you don't catch it at the early subtle stages. You catch it after the disaster has really happened. You'll get better and better at this, but so what? The important thing is that you figured it out. The important thing is that you understand the relationship between what you're getting on all subjects and what you're broadcasting. And the important thing is that you understand that broadcasting what you're observing is the most natural and normal thing in the whole world. You'd have to be a crazy person not to broadcast in response to what you're observing. Of course, you can't look at something and not broadcast about what you're looking at. And you can't look at something and broadcast about what you're looking at without attracting more of it. It's just the way the law of the universe works. But you can decide to look over there and look over there and look over there when you wake up tomorrow. You can decide when you wake up to focus differently. And that really is the key to all of this. That's what we're really wanting you to hear. You can decide that tomorrow is another day. You can decide that you want to feel better tomorrow than you did today. You can accept that you wake up with a fresh slate. You do every day. You can use the power of your mind in the most productive, effective time of your life. And that's first thing in the morning when you first awaken or first thing right after meditation. We're not encouraging you to meditate all day long, but we would sure meditate rather than solve problems. And we would sure meditate before we decide to solve a problem. We would acknowledge that the problem is there because you've attracted it and it's all part of the process, in other words. And we would approach the whole thing like your inner being does, that it's all part of the process. The reason that we gave you all of this in the way that we did is because you appear before us mad at yourself. Mad at yourself because you've been after this for a while and you think you should be doing better. And we want to say to you, you've been after this for a while, and wow, what you understand now that you didn't understand before, and how things are unfolding for you, wow, is what we want to say to you. We want you to feel the pride in where you are in the way that we feel it about you. And Esther, too. We don't want Esther to be all twirled up and mad at herself about something that feels like a mistake. There are no mistakes. There's just opportunities for greater and greater clarity, you see. And that's what's going on. People will always let you down if you're using them instead of your own receptive mode. So you want to say to all of them, if I use you for my receptive mode, you're going to fail and I'm going to hate you. <laughs> so I'm going to work on getting myself in the receptive mode and then maybe we'll play together. Maybe not, but maybe we'll play together. But I'm not going to ever again, probably are, I'm not going to ever again, <laughs> don't want to, probably are, not going to ever again use you to make the difference in the way I feel. I'm going to ask you to be so perfect in your performance of anything that I feel good. That's what's off for everybody. You don't need couches, I hope, or rugs. <laughs> You've always been a troublemaker. You've always been. Yeah, yeah, yeah.